In this video we will look at how to browse and search the historical directories of England and Wales. This is a collection of 689 digitised trade and street directories available from the University of Leicester's Special Collections Online. The first directory is from the 1760s and coverage continues until the 1910s. It's an excellent resource for family historians, for local and urban history and business history. Directories contain large amounts of information and in the digitised version all the text is searchable. We suggest starting from the home page which you can see here. You can browse the whole collection and this can be a good way to get to know the collection particularly if you're interested in a certain time period or place. If you want to browse scroll down the page here uh, and you can browse by English and Welsh counties which are listed here or you can click on the large blue browse button here and this loads all the directories all 689 of them for you so if I was interested in the southwest of England in the 1860s I would use the filters on the left hand side first of all filtering by period covered to 1860 to 1869 and then scroll down again for region and select southwest of England. And now I have a new set of results and it lists the eight directories for the southwest of England that uh, were published in that decade. To read a directory, I can either click on the title or the thumbnail image, and that will load the first directory for me. Please bear in mind that each directory is a large file uh, and they can take a moment to load, so please be patient. Uh, and then it will display the directory with the first digitised page, uh, usually the title page uh, in front of you. If you then want to read the directory, read through it, use the directional tab here and that will move you on to the next page. If you want to skip forward uh, to particular sections or skip to the end use the navigation here in the bottom right. The other most popular way to use the directories is to search them for people, for places or things and if you want to do that we recommend using the advanced search which you can access up here in the top right. Many of our users are looking for a person. Although this is one of the most common uses of the directory, it can be one of the trickiest as the directories contain so many names and so many common names like John Smith. You will need to try different searches and filters and have a bit of patience too. In this example, I want to search for a man called John W. Sharpus. I have some information that he was in business in the 1860s and would like to know more about him. If it is searched to um, defaulted to searching all collections, then click show all, untick select all collections, and then choose historical directories of England and Wales, and click save. Now scroll down, and here is where you can enter your search term, so in this case the name of the person that you're looking for. If you want to search the full text of the directories, leave this drop down menu on all fields. The other fields are uh, metadata or uh, catalog, parts of the catalog record. But if you want to search the full text, leave it as it is. And then here, type in the name that you're looking for. I'm going to search his name exactly as I saw it in this reference that I'm following up. So John W. Full stop. Sharpus, and then on the right hand side here you have a choice of how uh, the search engine finds your words for you. I'm going to select exact phrase because that will find me John and W and Sharpus together in that order, in that combination in a line of text. And that usually gets me more specific but fewer numbers of results. I can add more uh, search terms, either click add a row, 
and I could enter a date or a date range at this point but I'm going to leave it as it is and then click search here I get a new set of results, I get seven results listed in the middle here interestingly just browsing the titles I can see that he occurs in directories from different parts of the country so from in the north of England in the south and southwest and in the east midlands as well and that might be telling me something uh, about him and who he is and how he appears in the directories which may become apparent when we look through them again I click on the title or the thumbnail to get to the first directory on the right hand side here uh, it will tell you where your uh, name or place the words you're looking for occur in the directory and it will be the page or pages highlighted in yellow obviously there are lots of pages in the directory so, show so to be sure use the filter tab here and that shows me only the page or pages that he appears on uh, and it's already moved on so it's already loaded uh, that page for me obviously there will often be a lot of text on the page and it's not always easy to see by eye where he appears in uh, on this page so click the blue click the blue expanded button here and now it highlights where the name that I'm looking for occurs in mauve and I can see he's in the middle here recorded as a china and glass manufacturer his name has appeared in a section called the index to commercial prospectuses uh, which is a bit like an index to the adverts that occur in the directories and it uh, tell me what page uh, his advert or further information appears on page 57 so I could then uh, move to page 57 in the directory to see if there's more information about him as it only found one page searching John W. Sharpers, that suggests his name might appear slightly differently further on in the directory. To save this search result, um, I can either download the page if I click here and select this item, or I can print it off directly again, clicking the print symbol, printer symbol, and then clicking this item. If I select all, that will download the whole directory, which you might want to do, but it will take a while to download the whole thing. To move on to the next result, to the next directory, click on the blue navigation arrow in the top right here. It loads the next directory, which is the post office directory for Hampshire, Wiltshire and Dorset. It looks like a very similar result, so I'm just going to skip ahead to result number four, post office directory of Leicestershire and Rutland, 1855. Again, he's listed in this index of commercial prospectuses. So if I expand this one, I notice there he is. He's described slightly differently this time as uh, having or being connected with china and glass rooms. So this time, instead of being a manufacturer, he's recorded possibly. Uh, in retail or, or as a salesman of some kind and if I click onto the second page where his name appears much later in the directory on page 257 and expand it again here are John W. Sharp's China and Glass Room so it is an advert uh, it describes the room for us uh, the kind of uh, uh, china and glassware that's being sold it gives me some nice pictures here and some prices and it also gives me a street address um, on Oxford Street and on Langham Place in London which I could then uh, use possibly to do a new search or, or, or add a second element a place element into my searching for more information about this man So that's the basics of browsing and searching the directories. You may be interested, if you use the directories a lot, to understand them more as a historical source and the different uh, ways you might be able to use them in research or teaching. And we do now have some background pages 
uh, that give you more information about the directories and suggestions for, uh, for how to use them. Uh, and this is the section historical source here. If you click that, that will open up a new section, which is the background pages. Uh, this is the first page, which gives you some uh, a brief overview of the collection. And then the other sections tell you how you can use directories for local history, for family history, for topography, for researching op occupations. They also say more about the directories as a genre of book or information source, who the major publishers were, and we do have more detail about understanding the adverts and how they changed over time. We then end with some research possibilities, some future directions that you could use the, this kind of information for, and also some pitfalls, some things to watch out for. Finally, I do maintain a, an online reading list uh, if you'd like suggestions for either for published uh, historical research, which has used the directories as a source, or for other sources uh, of directories uh, that you might want to use. And this is an online bibliography, an online reading list that's freely available uh, in the form of a Zotero group.